of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, grace and peace of God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus, and the fellowship of their Holy Spirit be with you. In the waters of baptism, John died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, first fruit of all who'd fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant John, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For to others indeed they seem punished, yet it is their hope full of immortality. Chastise a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their judgment, they shall shine and dart about as sparks through the stubble. They shall judge the nations and rule all for peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. 
those who trust in him shall understand truth and the faithful shall abide with him in love because grace and mercy are with his holy ones and his care is with the elect the word of the lord thanks be to god A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Then he said, Write these words down, for they are trustworthy and true. He said to me, They are accomplished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give a gift from the spring of life-giving water. The victor will inherit these gifts, and I shall be his God, and he will be my son. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Now that very day, two of them were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us. It is nearly evening. The day's almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Just for a second, put yourself in the place of those two. Good friends and followers of Jesus who were with him in Jerusalem, were with him when the crowds were cheering, were with them when he was arrested and tortured and suffered and died and the very next day They just started to walk back home because all of their hopes and their dreams and their love were with and in that Jesus. And they saw him laid in a tomb and their hearts were broken and their hopes had died. Walk with them on that journey back home because a stranger came up to them and they didn't have any idea who he was. And they walked with him and they welcomed him into their home. They even pressed him a little bit to come in. And when they sat down for supper, even though it was their table, their bread, their house, this stranger took on the role of being the host of the dinner party and he's the one who broke bread and handed to them and prayed a blessing all of those things and all of a sudden it's Jesus and he's alive it washed over them and then he disappeared it wasn't until Jesus did something in their presence that they were used to seeing him do, hosting a dinner party, praising God, praying blessings, and sharing his food with them as the host at the table. As soon as he did a very, very Jesus sort of thing to do, then their eyes were opened, and they knew that he was alive. 
and they ran back to Jerusalem to tell all their friends. Yes, put yourself in the shoes of those two. Because for us who believe the story of Jesus is played out again and again in the story of us who believe and who follow. Because we, if we pause to recall and reflect and think about all the th ways you can recall and remember of John being very John, it's in the heart of those memories that we can touch into our faith that in Jesus, he too is truly alive. I invite you to call forth those memories and feelings and reflections. Think about the times when John was your right-hand man, when he made you laugh, when he gave you a little comfort, when he showed up again and again. For a while there, I thought he must be on payroll here. When he came to every game, every play, every event, when he was the guy who said, how can I help, and then did something about it. That's John being John, and all of that is not just precious to us, but precious to Jesus himself, who has gathered him home, and in whom he is even more alive than he ever was. Oh, there's nothing wrong with broken hearts, and our hearts break over and over again in this life, but we are also people of faith. And we know that the last word is the word of life, the word of love. And deep down underneath the sad hearts, there is always joy. Now, John's three stepdaughters uh, talked together about all their best memories and reflections about John and Stephanie gathered them up and wrote them down and she was going to share them with you this morning but she's homesick. The good news is that she can type. And Kathy asked me to read Stephanie's thoughts to you so if I sound like a girl it's because I'm reading her stuff. So here we go. Stepdaughter. That was the technical relationship when he married my mom, but honestly, I never felt that step part. I was his daughter, plain and simple. And so were my sisters, Stacy and Amy. He was the first man who made me feel like he truly wanted to be my dad unconditionally. I will always love him for that. In fact, when he and my mom divorced, it was far more traumatic than when she divorced my birth dad. I thought he might drift out of our lives, but he never did. Even after he married Kathy and had gained a whole new family and stepkids. For a man who never physically fathered any children, John was a natural dad. You could see that from his relationships with us, but also with Nevaeh. He jumped headfirst into raising her and went into super papa mode. Okay, this is me now. I'm picturing him with that cape and the tights, super papa. Back to Stephanie. It was really cute to watch. He first came into my life when I was 23. He was dating my mom and I was initially hesitant to get too close because I didn't want to get hurt if they broke up. It take, didn't take long before he made it past my barriers though because he was just so darn interesting and likable. He lived an untraditional life that was full of adventures and crazy stories that we chalked up as fiction but many of them turned out to be true. He was in a band called The Creators that played in Lake Tahoe in the 60s. He played the organ and opened for artists like Grace Slick and Jefferson Starship. He met Ansel Adams while taking a photography workshop in Yosemite with Ansel's assistant. 
He did some of the engineering for the big Thunder Mountain Railroad ride at Disneyland. And he designed some of the first air soles for Nike. One thing most people noticed if they spent any amount of time with John was that he was like an energizer bunny. Hyper with superhuman strength that he liked to show off and was able to work for hours longer than most people. He built his last home that he shared with Kathy and Nevaeh, who was a toddler at the time. From the ground up, he built it pretty much by himself. Before that, he took a 100-year-old home down to the studs and remodeled it. He was known as the family fix-it guy. If he couldn't fix it, no one could. His solutions were sometimes questionable, might even look scary, but they always worked. He was a natural engineer and loved to help people. My first indication that something might be wrong with John's health was when I asked if he could help my fiance and me unload our new kitchen appliances. Instead of using the dolly and bringing the dishwasher down the truck ramp, he literally lifted it out of the back of the truck and carried it about 15 feet to my front door. He was breathing so hard afterwards that I thought he might have a heart attack. When I asked if he was okay, he just brushed it off and said he was fine and reminded me that he had lifted stuff far heavier than that. Less than six months later, he was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. From helping fix things around Our Lady of Lourdes to helping his son-in-law build a horse riding arena and house till he got too sick to work, John was a helper. My oldest child said that they often heard people at the church say, John can help with that. I know that anytime something was broken or making a weird sound or not working as it should at my house, my first thought was, I bet Papa John knows how to fix that. I didn't always act on that thought because as my boys got older, they seemed to inherit Papa John's affinity for fixing things. However, if I, knew, I knew if they couldn't figure it out, he could either help guide them or fix it himself if absolutely necessary. When Stacy was in her early 20s, John remodeled a little house that was on his property for her and her future husband to rent for super cheap when Todd got out of the Navy. Many years later, when they decided to build a flower shop on the property where they'd built their home, John was there to help every step of the way. They couldn't have been more grateful for his expertise, hard work, and overall support of their family. When John was diagnosed, Stacy was there every step of the way as well, going to all his appointments and helping with anything he or Kathy needed. It wasn't because she felt the need to pay him back, but because he deserved to have someone care for him like he had cared for others. As difficult as it was to watch him decline over those last two years, she was so grateful for the time she had to spend with him, listening to stories that she wasn't quite sure were true, but they were interesting nonetheless. While he would occasionally get frustrated or impatient. He rarely got mad at any of us. According to my sister Amy, he didn't even get mad when he and my mom were out of town for the weekend and she held an 18th birthday party for her best friend Charity. The party included alcohol and way more guests than planned. Making flyers may have been a mistake and teens calling 900 numbers but because they'd cleaned the house so well, it was only when the 900 number calls showed up on the phone bill that they were found out. Charity was an honorary daughter, and honestly, he was probably pretty impressed with how close the girls came to getting away with that party. My personal favorite memory of John is the day I gave birth to my first child. I invited him to be in the delivery room, which turned out to be a good decision because my husband had drunk a double big gulp of Diet Coke. And right at the critical moment of transition, he had to use the restroom. I needed someone to hold my hand as I breathed through the contractions. John didn't even hesitate to step up and held my hand through several contractions with me consciously not squeezing his hand as hard as my husband's, 
because it wasn't his fault that I was in pain. Flash forward nearly 25 years, and I was reminded of that day several times while I was holding his hand during his last days. The grandchild he watched come into the world that day was there caring for him when he left it. It felt like life had come full circle. That grandchild came into the world as a female, but has been in the process of transitioning to a more masculine, gender fluid identity. In John's final moments, Elliot, formerly Brenna, had a conversation where they asked Papa John if it bothered him that they were transitioning. Papa John said all mattered to him was that the little baby he held at birth was happy. That was all he ever wanted for any of his children or grandchildren, to be happy. One of Elliot's favorite memories was the night Papa John took her to a father-daughter sock hop for Girl Scouts. He picked Elliot up like it was a real date. He was dressed as one of the cool guys from the 50s, including jeans, a white t-shirt, and a leather jacket. Elliot loved that Papa John danced with her and that afterwards they went to McDonald's for milkshakes and french fries, just like they would have after a sock hop in the 50s. What I remember from that event is that when Elliot's dad wouldn't go, John was more than happy to fill in. In fact, I'm pretty sure he loved it as much as Elliot. John was a simple guy who loved his family and who helped his friends and neighbors. He loved NASCAR and homebrewed beer, Fritos and Fig Newtons, baking bread and making his special strawberry jello for family holiday dinners. He had large collections of books, movies, and music. He and Kathy were very involved in the square dancing community. He was a caller in addition to a dancer. He was a bit of a pack rat, and he liked a good deal. He always seemed to have one or more of anything you might need and was happy to loan something or sometimes just outright give it to you. He had a mind for numbers. Time was important and being on time was required. While we were all sitting with him in those last days, we wondered out loud how many more hours he could keep holding on. We weren't even sure if he could hear us. But like Babe Ruth pointing out the f field direction of his next home run, one of the last intelligible things he said was 40 hours. Initially, we chalked it up to the morphine talking at the time and in his condition. It did not seem we could possibly make it another 40 hours. The more time passed, the more we commented that he just might make it to his 40-hour projection. Always reliable and a man of his word, he did. We often joked that Amy was his favorite daughter, including at his bedside. And she got a little smirk from him when we all thought he was sleeping. Let's be honest. She was definitely his favorite youngest daughter. When he passed, I noted the time, 922, which is Amy's birth month and day. So maybe like all his other stories, there was a bit of truth in that. Regardless, he was her favorite. He was all of our favorite, and his loss is immeasurable. John was our dad for 30 years. He was our dad by choice and by love. All of us felt that a blood connection was neither thicker nor necessary. We were his daughters and the bind could not have the the bond could not have been stronger. He was always there for us, always. And we will always love and miss him. Always. So let's stand together to lift John up with our prayers. After we've listened to a lovely song that we've picked out to help all this sink in. And you can sit down for that.
Now together, let's lift John up with our prayers, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. For John, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. For our brother who ate the body of Christ, bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends and all who've helped us, especially Dorothy and Alvin Rowitzer, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. For those who've fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of our brother John, that we may be consoled in our grief by the Lord Jesus, who wept when his friend Lazarus died, we pray to the Lord. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. God, our shelter, God, our strength, you listen with love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for all our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of every human weakness and imperfection. Grant them the fullness of life in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Now let's pray together the words Jesus taught to his friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. Let our farewell express affection for him, ease our sadness, and make our hope strong for one day. With joy we will greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers everything, destroys even death itself. hands father of mercies we commend our brother John in the sure certain hope that together with all who've died in Christ he will rise with him on the last day we give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon John and through John in this life they're signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the Saints in Christ merciful Lord turn toward us listen to our prayers open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. In peace, let us commend our brother to his place of rest. Thanks be to God.